Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 17 of the Halloween Craft Countdown where I'm sharing 20 brand new Halloween paper crafts to make with a Cricut over 20 days. Today's project are these fun 3D potion bottles. They come in two different versions. You've got one that has this window in the front which you can then fill with a vellum or tracing paper and that means you can add these little cork fairy lights to make it light up. If I turn my camera light off, it shows it a bit better. And I've also included versions that have this bit filled in for if you'd prefer to make one that doesn't light up. And if that's the case and you don't want a light up one, then um, the designs also come with a little paper craft cork to go in the top instead of the lights. But these lights are actually contained, the battery is contained within the cork. They're designed for wine bottles, but they work for potion bottles just as well. Three different bottle shapes are included in today's project. We've got this tall one, then we've got a middle one here. And finally, a little short one. And I've put a variety of different labels in the download folder too, so you can choose which ones you want to appear on which bottles. And I'll show you how to size them all to perfectly fit which individual bottle you want to put them on. Let's get started. The files for this project are free for the next 24 hours. Here's how to download them. Register a free ticket for the Halloween Craft Countdown at craftwithsarah.com forward slash hcc24. After registering, you'll get an email which contains a link to the schedule page for the countdown. Visit the schedule page to find and download today's files. Each download is only available for free for 24 hours after it goes live. If you've missed some, check out the Instant Access Bundle at craftwithsarah.com forward slash HCC24 Bundle, which gives immediate and ongoing access to all of the files from the Halloween Craft Countdown, plus loads of extra bonus designs. The download comes in a zip folder. You will need to unzip this before uploading the SVG files into Cricut Design Space. This is what one of the potion bottle designs looks like when it's loaded into Cricut Design Space. I'm just going to quickly show you all of the files that are included with today's project as there are quite a lot on there so I just want to make sure you know where to find everything. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder you'll find that you've got four subfolders within there. The first one is called 00 printable labels. I just put the 00 on the start so that it would appear at the top. This is where we've got all of the little print and cut stickers that we'll be putting on to the bottles to add a label like um, absinthe or poison or something like that. And then you've also got all of the files for three different types of bottles in three different file formats. For Cricut Design Space, you'll want the ones which are in the SVG files folder. And then within there, if I just change this so you can see the file names, we've got two small, two medium and two large. The ones with the number two in the file name, for example, this one, large dash two, are the ones like the ones you can see on my screen that have the window cut out on them ready for adding lights. The versions that don't have that number two in them have these middle bits filled in. So if you're not planning on lighting up your potion bottles and you just want it to be solid cardstock instead, use the ones without the two. But if you're gonna be adding lights in, like I am, choose the ones with the two. If you're not sure how to upload SVG files to Cricut Design Space, visit the schedule page for this Halloween Craft Countdown and check out the foundation learning section near the top of the page. Within there, there's a separate tutorial on how to upload SVGs into Design Space. I will walk you through the process of uploading the print and cut stickers there in case that's something that you haven't done before. So if we look in this 00 printable labels, there are five different labels to choose from. We've got absinthe, arsenic, cyanide, snake venom and wolfsbane. These are all PNG files, which means that they are printable files. So these will be done using Cricut's print and cut functionality. I'm going to be cutting them on just photo paper and gluing them onto my potion bottles, but you could cut them from sticker paper instead if you wanted to, and then you'd be able to just stick them straight on. To upload these, go into Upload, and then Upload Image. You can then click Browse on your computer or drag and drop them in, just like if you're uploading an SVG file. Drag in my Snake Venom one, and it will look like this. Don't worry if it looks a little bit blurry on this page, 
it will be fine once it's actually in the project. Press continue and then you'll see a screen that looks like this. You don't need to do anything on this screen, just press apply and continue. And then this might look a little bit new to you if you haven't uploaded any print and cut images for a while as Cricut recently changed how this screen works. You want to make sure you choose this third option, the one that says flat graphic. Don't choose either of the other options or it's not going to work as we want it to. Make sure you choose the one that says flat graphic, then press continue. You don't need to change anything on this screen, press upload and then it will appear on the project. And you might find <laughs> just like that, that it loads in really, 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 really big. So we can make it smaller. To do that, make sure the padlock icon above the width of the height box is it's closed. If yours is open, click it to close it. And then just add in maybe three inches to the width to make it a lot smaller. And then drag it over the potion bottle. And then you can resize using the little arrow in the corners to get it however big you want to appear on your potion bottle. And I think I'll go for one on the front and the back. So let's move that over there and then press the duplicate item at the top of the layers panel to make a copy. So these will be printed on my home printer and then I'll feed it into the Cricut and it will cut around all the edges for me. Or if you didn't want to do the print and cut on the Cricut, you could just use the print functionality and then cut around the edge with scissors because it is quite an easy shape to do. So that's the labels done, but we also need to format the potion bottle as it's got lots of lines on it that we need to change to be scored. Click on your potion bottle and press the ungroup button at the top of the layers panel to separate out all the pieces. If we scroll down, you can see there are a few little different bits associated with these potion bottles. And these steps are exactly the same depending on if you're using the small, medium or large potion bottle, it'll work the same. All right, so we're gonna look down here and you see we've got these brown pieces. These are to make a paper craft cork to go in the top of your bottle for if you're not using um, the cork fairy lights. If you are using the cork fairy lights, you can drag a box around all those brown pieces and then press the delete button at the top of the layers panel or press the delete key on your keyboard to remove them. But I am gonna cut them just to show you how to put it together. If you are using it, you need to first click the little circle with the tabs coming out of it. You see in the layers panel, we've now got this selected and there's a little arrow next to it on the left. Click the arrow and that will open up to show you two separate layers. Click on the one that looks like little dashed lines in a circle. This will be changed to a score line. So with just that one layer selected, under operation, change it to score. Then click the name of that group in design space, so the one that appears next to the little arrow, to select both those layers. You can see in the layers panel they're both selected because they've both got this kind of greeny background on. Then press attach down at the bottom of the layers panel. Attach is what tells the Cricut where we want it to do a score line. So we're telling it to score those little tab circular bits onto that brown piece. This piece also has a line to change to score. So we can click again. And then this has got a little diagonal line. Change it to score. Click to select both of them and press attach. And then we'll do the same thing for all of the potion bottle layers that have score lines too. You can tell which ones they are because in the layers panel, they've got the little arrow next to them. So I can click into this one, for example, click on my single layer. Now for this particular one, because it's four lines that make up a square, it does look like a square shape, but um, if you're looking at the one that looks like the black outline, that's the one to choose. Change it to score, click to select the group, and attach. And then I'll look down until I find the next one with a little arrow. Open it up, click on that top layer, change it to score, select that group, and attach. I'm going to do the same for all of these mini groups that have the little arrows and then when you open it up there's two layers inside. So score, click to select and attach. I'm going to go through them quickly now. Change to score, click and attach and then I've got this one. Click the single layer, change to score, click the group and attach. And I've got two more to go. You can see once you get into the swing of it, it does end up pretty quick. 
and score, click and attach. I now know I've done them all because all the pieces that are left don't have any of those little arrows next to them. And all the ones that do now say attach. When you're cutting out the ones that have the window on them, you've got these two kind of white pale grey shapes. These are what you need to cut from a translucent material such as vellum or tracing paper so that it will cover the gaps in the front and back of the potion bottles and you'll still be able to see the glow from your fairy lights through it. This is all done now, so what I would recommend doing is saving your projects so that if you want to make it again, you don't have to do all that formatting again another time. But I'm just going to go ahead and press make to show you how it looks. This is my print then cut piece with my two labels on it. And then this one, as I said, would be my vellum. Then I've got all the other bits. And you'll know if you've done the scoring right, because you'll see the score lines appearing on the piece of card that needs to be scored. If yours look different and you saw all the score lines or some of the score lines on a separate piece of card rather than on top of the bits underneath, that means you may have forgotten to attach some of them. So if that's the case, just click cancel, go back and double check. If you want to, you can change the paper size in here. This particular one for the large one, it's not going to let me choose. Oh no, it is going to let me choose A4. Here it is. I thought it was going to be a bit too big, but it isn't. Okay, perfect. And then if you want to, you can drag and drop to move things around. So get everything looking how you want it to, then press continue to connect to your Cricut machine, get everything cut out from cardstock, and then we'll see how to put together our 3D potion bottles. Here are all of my pieces cut out and ready to be turned into my 3D potion bottle. I cut mine from textured cardstock. I'm not sure if you can see. There's a slight kind of linen effect on here. And that actually wasn't the best idea because it's now really, really hard to see all my score lines because they're blending into that linen pattern. So actually, I think for this particular project, plain cardstock would have been better. Or another way to do it if you do want to use textured cardstock is when you're in design space, duplicate all of the score lines in place, which you can do by clicking on them and then pressing Alt on your keyboard and clicking with your mouse. That'll make a copy of the score line in exactly the same place. Then you can attach that to the base pieces and then you'll have two of each score line, which means your Cricut will go down each one twice. You'll get a deeper score and that'll be easier to see on pieces like this. However, I didn't think to do that at the time, so I'm just going to have to kind of guess. I could also get a metal ruler and my scoring tool and go down them all again to make them a little bit deeper. But I'm going to give it a try, just not being able to see them very well. You can see I've already folded this one up. These two pieces are the same, so I'll show you how to do it on this one shortly. But first, let's glue the um, vellum to the backs of those potion bottles. If you're doing the ones that don't light up so they're completely filled in, then you won't have to do this step. I'll turn these upside down. Get some glue, and then just go around the edge of one of them to start with staying fairly close to that window all the way around and then take one of your vellum pieces or tracing paper in my case and stick it over the top gently push down you don't want the glue to smush out and be visible in the tracing paper so I'm just being quite gentle with how I'm pushing that and then it's the same for the other one. They can be put to one side now to dry. We'll do the folding up of these two pieces. So this is the front of my card, the one that has the texture on it. And this is the side that the Cricut's gone down all of those scoring uh, lines on. So I'm going to turn it upside down and then fold inwards along all of the score lines. You can see I've already done it on this piece. So all the score lines around the edge will be folded inwards. This is the back, apart from the little flap on the top. And these will all be folded in the opposite direction. So we'll do this bit last. So leave this bit for now, but all the other ones, these ones, these ones, these ones, and then the tabs, it's just one bit on the bottom. They'll all be folded upwards. 
To help get a crisper fold, go down all your fold lines with a brayer tool or a rolling pin from your kitchen or a scraper tool, something similar to that, um, to help them be a crisper fold. So now I've got to try and seal these score lines, which is a little hard. And then just push it down with the brayer. Gets you a better fold, which will make it easier to put the potion bottle together. My score lines haven't showed on that back side at all, which is why I'm kind of turning it the other way. So this is the front. I'm folding up along them just so I can actually see them. Um, this texture card was not great. Not a great choice. So you see when you're looking at it with the back side, all these tabs are sort of coming upwards as if they're coming up towards you. And I'll brayer those in a minute. I've just got to try and see these lines. It's a long score line when you can't really see it. I'm just kind of putting my thumb down it to start that fold. Then I can see where it is a little bit better. All right, now we can brayer all of these. All right, so that's all those. Now we've got this top bit. And you probably won't be able to see this because I can hardly see it even just looking at it. But this has four score lines along this top part. There's one that lines up kind of along that point. Then there's one slightly above it. So there's a score line on the bottom of this little diagonal line and another one that lines up along the top. And then the same for the top bit. There's one along here and one slightly above it up there. So we need to make sure all four of those are folded, but these ones will fold the opposite direction. So rather than it coming towards you when you're looking at the back of the piece, they're gonna go more towards the front. So this is my front side here. Start along that very bottom one and fold it. And then there's one more just above it and Gonna fold along. It is tricky because they're very close together. So you might find that these ones are easier if you do run down them again with your scoring tool. That one, so there's now two. You can sort of see here when I tilt it that I've got those two score lines. And then there's two more up here. These are so hard to see. I didn't want to waste more card by cutting it again, but I think it would have been easier. And then there's one more just above that one. So the idea of this bit is that it makes up the lip around the edge of the bottle. It's this bit. So when we stick it all together, we've done these the opposite way so that it will sort of fold round on in itself and become enclosed a little bit like an envelope um so that's how that will be stuck but we're not going to do that quite yet first let's put together the base structure so get both of these pieces fold up the second one and then we need to glue them together using the tab along the bottom turn them upside down and take the bottom piece of your potion bottle. This also has two score lines. So I'll fold down those. These folds here are gonna be for this bit. So we're lining up the bits of the bottom that don't have the tabs on, and they'll be glued onto the tabs of this. It doesn't really matter which way around you get it, but if you want your bottom to look neater, Glue the tabs on top, like that, and like that. You can either use double-sided tape or glue for this project. Tape has the advantage that it dries, well, you know, it doesn't need to dry, it sticks straight away. Um, but glue, I think, gives a bit of a firmer hold. Make sure you only stick that up to the score line, line it, line it up with the score line against that tab. I'm so sorry for my voice in some of these videos. <laughs> I was really hoping I would be better in time to record them, but 
didn't work out that way. I generally feel okay. It's just my throat is not getting better. And then we'll say this one. Give that a moment to dry because we don't want to start folding it up and bending it into shape while the glue's still wet. Otherwise it might come off and... Um... Oh look, I have a teeny tiny spider on my project. Okay, well, I'm going to go rescue this little spider and put him outside. And um, by the time I've done that, the glue should be dry. My glue is now all dry and the little spider has been rescued. So let's crack on with the potion bottle. These are fairly easy to put together because all the tabs are nice and big. So we'll basically be folding it round and then when you get to the top, this bit folds inwards and then this bit kind of folds back. So it's following the shape of the potion bottle as it goes round like that. <laughs> it's hard to show. You can either put the glue onto the edge of the potion bottle or you can put it onto the tabs it's up to you which way you want to do it or again you can use double-sided tape when i did the two i've already made i put the glue on the tabs so this time i'm going to put it around the edge of the bottle just so that i can say i've tried both ways and um you can see which one's easier i put quite a bit on here you don't need to do up in the very top bit just yet. Let's give this a try. <laughs> I don't know why I always think it's a good idea to do something for the first time when I'm recording a video. We're going to go with it, see how it turns out. All right, so this is the back, the inside. I'll fold it up like this. And do you know what? Actually, it might be easier to turn this way round. Fold the bits in, stick it on, and I know everything's in the right place. Oops, just got glue everywhere. Now we're experimenting. <laughs> mm, this hasn't worked as well as I thought it was going to. Maybe that wasn't a good way to do it. Maybe just gluing the tabs would have been easier. I'll go back to how I should have done it, which was uh, having the base along the bottom. I'm following the shape and the lines along the base piece, the bit with the window, to stick all my tabs down. You might find when you get one bit into position, something else has shifted. So just keep persistent with it until your glue's dried. And this glue does not want to stick. I've just realised that I forgot to fold the score lines on my bottle. Oh, that popped off again. Did you just see that? Look at that. I do find the necks of the bottles the trickiest bit to get in. Because you've got to get that angle just right here pulls the card in a way that it doesn't necessarily want to be pulled in. Anyway, as I was saying, I forgot to fold the score lines on the top of the bottle on the bit that I've already got um, stuck. So I'll do it on this one. And this has the same four score lines that we did on the edges. And this is the front. I want to fold towards myself on all four of those score lines. It's really hard to get those second ones when you can't actually see them because of the texture on the card. There. So again, when we glue that, it will fold round on itself. Sort of concertina it round. Like that. Try and do the folding on this one now. That was very silly to forget. It might even be easier to glue these down before we stick the rest of it together. I'm not sure. 
Right, so I think I'm going to glue these bits on next. So if you've got your potion bottle upwards, there's a tab on each of these three sides on the edges. Put glue on that tab only up to that score line, the first score line. And then you're sort of folding it round and then that tab will end up stuck to the neck of the bottle. Hold it in place. So then the bits where you've got the two little score lines, they act as the ridges to make the lip of the bottle. And don't worry if it's a little bit messy because this strip is to go around the edge to neaten it up when they're all stuck on. So I'll do the same on this one. Bend it all around on in itself. And this one. There will be gaps between each one. You see I've got a gap there and there, but that's why we've got this strip to cover that up shortly. Now the final side can go on. Let me just glue this tab on first to make it a little bit easier. You can see where it overlaps. I'll just hold that in place until the glue dries. That's resting on top. And then also need to stick these tabs on. Actually gonna change tack slightly and do the neck of the bottle first. It's sort of bent out of shape a little bit from where I did the first one. Just tuck these out a little. I'm not quite sure why my tabs here are not, they're quite so far in. It didn't do that on the other ones. They all stick together really nicely. I think it's because I'm doing it on camera, so it's just decided to... Uh, Play up for me. There we go. I think I just need to push it in. Double sided tape would have been way easier than glue. But I've committed now. <laughs> okay, so it will come out to reach those tabs. You just need to give it a little bit of a squidge and a squeeze to get it into that position. You can see I managed that, so now all those tabs have sealed. That's what gives it this sort of inward effect. I'm not sure if you can quite see, but it sort of slopes upwards where we've squidged it onto those tabs. And then just like on all the other ones, a little bit of glue on the last tab up here. And fold it round in on itself. Okay, hard bit done, thankfully. <laughs> it's funny that I didn't have anywhere near as many problems doing that when I did my other two. But um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes when you do it on camera, everything just goes against you. <laughs> Next, take the square bit that's got the score lines around the edge and fold down. It doesn't matter which way around you do it as long as you're consistent on all four. Because you won't see this bit when it's all done. Then this is going to glue inside here and line it up with the top of your four tabs. and squidge it in. You might need to just gently squeeze the edges like I'm doing here to get them to stick. So hold it for a little while until that glue dries. Should be nice and flush, pretty much straight all across the top. This gives the neck of the bottle a little bit more stability and also means that when we put the cork in, it's just got a little extra bit. Okay, next we've got 
a little bit to get around the edge. There's one tab just on one side to fold down. Loop more down there. Doesn't matter which side you start with, but put the tab over one of the corners so that the score line lines up with one of the corners. Like that. So you see that's just tucked around there. And then fold this along. It does have score lines all the way down it. So it makes it a little bit easier. I haven't folded those score lines. I'm just going to let it naturally go in as this is tucked around. This is covering up those corner gaps, making it look a little bit more consistent. It'll try and slip down when the glue's drying. So just try and hold it in place along all those four sides. This is kind of one of those projects where you need an extra set of hands. Or at least one extra hand. It'll make it much easier. Okay. There. And then we've got one final bit for the bottle, which is one more little square. This glue's on the top to neaten up all of those edges or cover up all those messy bits okay potion bottle shape is done if you've done the print and cut labels for the side you can glue them on at this point it doesn't matter where you want to put them go okay, for around there And then if you decided to cut the cork parts, that's our one last bit to do. Take the long bit, it's got a score line down one side, but we don't actually want to score that. That's just to show us where we're going to be putting it. So I'm gonna roll it up just to get a bit of bend going in that bit of card. And then we'll glue it at an angle. So the outside bit will glue along that score line. It will end up looking like um, an oval that's smaller on one side than it is on the other. Glue up to that score line, but don't go any further. Fold it round at an angle until it lines up along that score line. And then hold it in place because it's not going to want to stay in that position very easily. Here's one side and here's the other. The smaller side is the one that will go in the bottle. The bigger one will go at the top. Okay. Now if you've ended up like me and you've got a little bit of overlap, you can trim that off with scissors. So I just want my top to be nice and level. Cut that bit. Make it level along there. Let's just check that's going to fit. Perfect. And then take the circle bit with all the little tabs. Fold down those tabs. And then this will go in the top, so the bigger bit. And we'll glue it in there. And I reckon gluing in the inside here is the easiest way to do it all the way around, just a little rim of glue. Make sure you choose the bigger side. And then pop that in. It won't touch on every single bit, that's okay. As long as there's enough bits touching that it will stick. And then again, hold that in place until the glue dries. Once the glue's dried, add some more to the top and then stick the slightly bigger circle on. This is gonna cover it up Make it look a bit neater. Pushing down quite firmly on this to make sure that it sticks well. And there's my DIY cork for if you wanted to make a paper craft one. It just slots in the top. However, I am using these cork LED lights instead. Just pull out the battery protector because I want my bottles to light up. Look at this one I've already done. Turn the camera light out. You see how they glow really nicely? I've also got this one. 
there. So these legs are really cool. And they're meant for wine bottles, really, which is why they're shaped like a wine cork. But they work great for these. All you need to do is unravel them, and that is important. A lot of these lights, the instructions that come with them say, for safety, make sure they're unraveled. And as we're unraveling, feed it through into the wine bottle. And this is sometimes a little bit fiddly because we're putting it through a hole that's not that big. <laughs> Go all the way through. I did find a couple of times when I was doing the purple and orange ones that my lights got a bit stuck, in which case my scoring stylus or the edge of a weeding tool was helpful just to go down in there and pick them into position. And if you end up with any lights that are a little bit too close to the vellum um, and you'd rather they were a bit more in the middle, then you can use that same trick. Just get something long and thin. Weeding tools work great. Just make sure you don't prick yourself with the sharp bit. Don't put the sharp bit inside either or you might break the cardstock. Um, or a pen with the lid on because you don't want to accidentally draw all over your potion bottle. I've managed to get it twisted. Not supposed to have problems with twisted up fairy lights until Christmas, not Halloween. All right, I got those untangled. <laughs> Let's continue feeding it through. Hopefully without tangling it again. When you get to the edge, there's the cork that will just sit nicely in there and it shouldn't go all the way through. It should just sit in there. And when we turn them on, beautiful lights. Here we go. And that's my third of my patient water lanterns finished. And we're all done for today's project. I swear the other two that I made before I got sick were not so difficult. So hopefully it's just the fact that my brain's a little bit mushy at the minute that made this one a bit complicated. And um, hopefully you'll find it a little bit easier than I did to stick together. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make 3D light up potion bottles for Halloween with your Cricut machine. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut paper crafts. I hope to see you tomorrow for day 18 of the Halloween Craft Countdown. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Bye.